How many of you in the audience consider yourselves entrepreneurs? A couple? Great. Now, how many of you guys are completely satisfied with the world and think nothing needs to be changed? This is why we all need to learn entrepreneurship. So what is an entrepreneur? It's generally defined as someone who sees a problem, makes a plan, and starts a business. But this definition can be easily expanded. An entrepreneur can be someone who tries to start a company, but it can also be someone who wants to improve their current company or create social change. Entrepreneurship are the skills required to break the norm. But it's important to realize that entrepreneurship is not a one-day gig. It takes many days in order to create lasting change. Entrepreneurship is not about starting companies. It's about creating sustainable change to the status quo. Since many of you guys have at least one gripe about life that you want to change, here are the three things you need to know in order to be a successful entrepreneur. One, you have to be able to identify your customers and their needs. Two, you have to be able to manage risk. And three, you cannot let failure get in the way. As any good entrepreneur should, I'd like to begin with setting up my credibility. Since childhood, I've always had a knack for finding solutions to tough problems. In the seventh grade, when my parents wouldn't buy me a wallet, I started my own duct tape wallet business where I earned my first hundred dollars. My company, Genuine Duct, was my baby. I had to make sure my employees wouldn't ruin my business or do something without telling me. I was pretty bossy. I, we were not only selling wallets, but we quickly expanded into purses and checkbook holders, and even ran a raffle. Freshman year of college, when I uh, went to Trogo at 3 a.m., it was closed on me. And I tried to save starving college kids with an on-demand ramen delivery service. I hastily purchased the domain name, therapidramen.com, that very night. Fortunately, my mother convinced me out of this loopy late-night decision. And today, I'm working with a brilliant team of engineers and entrepreneurs in starting a medical device startup. My company, Stasis Labs, is bringing health monitoring technologies to the world's emerging markets. We're currently building uh, continuous vital signs monitors for hospitals in India. I've always had an entrepreneur entrepreneurial mindset, but I'm truly a nerd and an engineer at heart. Being an engineer has its perks, but it also comes with a lot of pitfalls. For example, when an engineer sees a problem, we immediately race to find the coolest way to solve it, often disregarding the practicality of the solution we come up with. So when I started taking formal classes in entrepreneurship, I was shocked to find out that the first rule is not to think about the solution, but rather to think about your customer. So let's break this down. What does it even mean to think about your customer? At first, it's realizing that the world does not revolve around you. Simply cannot create social change without understanding the people who are living it. When you put the customer first, you realize that you cannot create change that they won't accept. Always empathize with the end user, the person buying your product or following your new rule. If, they don't, if you have no one that wants what you're trying to make, you have no customers and you should probably change your idea. But to help you better understand what a customer is, think about yourself. You're the customer for many things in life. Follow the money. When you pay for Starbucks, you're their customer. It's simple. But did you ever realize that you're paying for college and thus you are the university's customer? And isn't the customer always right? By this, I don't mean go tell your professors that you're signing his paychecks and thus you deserve an A. That's a great way to lose your degree. But it's so easy to fall into the mindset that the university sets the rules and we're only there to follow them. We are paying for our degrees and it's our duty to make sure our degrees fit our educational interests. Once I realized this, I made sure that I was not taking any mandatory classes I didn't like. I worked with my department to find courses that fit me. Sure, this led me to have course conflicts for the last five semesters, but after all, I was in charge of my degree. Knowing the target audience for your endeavors is critical. If you want to transform something, you have to know who will be affected by that change and that they will like it. Otherwise, the change will simply not be sustainable. Remember when the university tried to establish no biking time zones? We, the customers, resisted it, and the rules are not here today. Once you've identified your customers and know what they want, you're ready to start making decisions. Decisions are tough. Nothing is black and white. The answer always falls in between. Our whole education is built upon graded, uh, being graded on what's right or wrong. As an engineer, I've been trained to solve artificial problems that have only one solution. But in the real world, it's never that simple. For example, that's like saying there's only one correct way to get from here to the 9 now. 
Sure, we're all in the support structure of college today, but when we graduate, the grading system will disappear. Each of us will define what is right and what is wrong differently, and there'll be no one to tell us who's actually correct. Knowing this crippling piece of information, how can any of us make any decision to do just about anything? This is the second skill every entrepreneur must learn. We have to learn to be able to mitigate risk. <laughs> the unfortunate reality of life is that there's too many unknowns for us to know exactly what the next best move is. However, rather than freaking out and hiding ourselves in a cave, realize that in order to do anything big in this world, anything worth doing, you have to be taking risks. Risk is scary. We work our whole lives through the system and promise the security. In high school, we have to do well to get into college. In college, we have to do well to get our first job. In our first job, we still have to do well to get promoted, and so on and so on. If you blindly follow this process, you end up working tirelessly to climb someone else's ladder. If you want to break out of this cycle, you have to be able to mitigate risks enough to be willing to take that. <laughs> risk can take many forms. Since I'm founding a startup, I face tons of risk. The startups practically have no job security, my technology could fail, and even after all of this, my customers could hate my product. My job on a daily basis is to mitigate these risks. It's to ensure that not only I, but all my employees have a job to go to tomorrow. Mitigating risk is challenging and is by no means a perfect science. <coughs> However, you can't be risk averse your whole life. In fact, many of you guys take insane risks on a daily basis. But as Oliver Amberton says, cars can crash, businesses can fail. You take sensible precautions like wearing seatbelts and reading business books. And then you get on with your life. This segues into the last point I want to drive home today. No matter how much risk we mitigate and how much we talk to our customers, you can always fail. Changing the status quo is hard and failure is tough. It crushes our hopes and convinces us that all of our decisions up till now were built upon a broken foundation. But doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. This is the last skill every entrepreneur must learn. Failure is simply a part of success. In the process of creating Stasis Labs, we've won many awards and gained many followers, but I've also gotten used to facing failure on a regular basis. We've gotten many no's and looks of disapproval. People who didn't understand the vision, people who didn't believe we could make it happen, or simply people who weren't patient enough to listen to the whole story. Just a month ago, I pitched my company to investor Mark Cuban and was publicly rejected in front of over a thousand people on stage at Bovard. I've never felt that many people squirm in their seats behind me. Some failures are easy to brush away, but this one stuck with me and made me think for a while. How could I make an audacious goal like globalizing modern medicine successful? Now, the answer is clear. Maybe I won't. But one realization kept me going through all this negativity. Even if I'm not the one to modernize global medicine, my actions could one day inspire one of you to make it happen. The truth is, there's a pretty small chance that Stasis Labs will become the next world-changing company, but that won't prevent me from trying. Changing the status quo is not always a one-man endeavor. It takes many people, many tries to make it happen. As an individual entrepreneur, I simply want to contribute to that change. At the beginning of this talk, Many of you acknowledge that you're not completely satisfied with how the world is today. I challenge you all to become entrepreneurs and try and tackle one of those issues. It will be difficult to create sustainable change, but if you follow these three rules, you can definitely succeed. There's no point waiting to be more prepared. You'll never be fully prepared for what's to come ahead. Now is the time to act. And if you come out of this talk ready to create change, but don't know what to tackle, keep searching. Because once you find an idea that you truly love, nothing will be able to get in your way. Thank you.